Like, one little thing would change everything. Generic control in the deck goes. We're here back with another Game 3 FNAF video. It feels like a long time since I've done a Game 3 FNAF video, but today we're doing the ultimate timeline. I don't know if people wanted me to do this and a bunch of other videos, like, in one go. Like, I think there's, like, multiple parts to this. I don't know if people wanted me to watch all of them in one, if this is one of those videos. I'm not sure when I was supposed to do that, but I do read every single one of your comments, so please let me know down below in the comment section if I should have done that a different way. I'm not really sure. It's currently... 10 o'clock and I still have two videos to record after this video. It's been a very long day. My nose is busted. My finger is cut. My body hurts. Don't get a new green screen, you know? This is just the things that happen when you get a new green screen. You check my reaction to the last video, which was ID's Fantasy, talking about solving security breach. I'll leave it right up there. I'll see the link down below in the description if you want to watch that. It's a very interesting video, and ID's Fantasy reads every comment just like I do. So, leave some comments down below. Shout out to the patrons, because they get the videos there early, and allow me to have a paywall channel. Could not do this if it was not for them. I'm here to make you smile and not make you pay, and it wouldn't be possible if it weren't for the patrons that give the videos a day early or get their names seen down below by millions of people. Especially right now with Dragon Ball Z a bridge right now going to the end of season three with Kirby Oh my god, those videos are going to literally have hundreds of thousands of views and that's just the more people that are gonna see uh, Like each video is gonna have well over a hundred thousand views I bet I think my reactions have uh, over a hundred thousand views for like the end of season three So it's gonna be a really interesting time. Thank you so much for being here I hope you're having a wonderful day. I hope I paid time a little better. I hope you're subscribed. We just hit 80,000 subscribers if we get 100,000 for the end of the year, I would get a duck tattoo, which would be crazy because I only have this tattoo and I have no other tattoos. I'd probably get it on my arm somewhere. It would not be hidden. I would get a like rubber duck tattoo on my body if I got 100,000 for the end of the year, which we're getting close to the end of the year. So if you're not already subscribed or your friends aren't subscribed, I would appreciate it if you did if you also like FNAF. I know the FNAF movie is actually going to come out here really, really soon. So I'm probably going to go see that in theaters. Probably take me and my girlfriend to see that, which would be awesome. She actually painted that right there she painted that a couple years ago absolutely beautiful signed trevor lawrence nezuko that julian sent to p.o box but let's go ahead and jump into the ultimate timeline all right today we end the torment 19 books 11 Jesus. games eight what about the movie years. what about the movie leading to this moment which apparently is FNAF loosely is connected finally complete the pieces are in place for us now all we have to do is put this story of tragedy jealousy and i see the, i see the puppet together. i don't like it Hello, Internet. Mm -hmm. Welcome it's a game to theory. Game Theory, the show that feels like a kid revealing the class project that he's been working on all year. That's not a project. It's the class project that I've been working on for the past decade of my and life. And I've been reacting to for the past year. This one is big, my friends, and I gotta admit, kind of nervous. I haven't attempted a timeline video on this franchise since 2018. Back in the Why, days really? when Mike was the crying child, I will, how old is this? Was actually Seven surprise, months. And Fazgu wasn't a phrase I'd ever thought I'd have to utter. Mm. But since the last time I did something like this, we've had three more massive games, the death and revival of the FNAF movie, and more robot kids than you can shake a staff bot at. It is exhausting <laughs> trying to keep track of this whole franchise, which honestly is why I'm here today. The Dude, you know how many things he's gonna come up with for the movie? It is full of speculation and theory, so to hopefully make it a little easier for everyone and to give us all a baseline to talk about this I feel franchise like movie this is like a multi-part video. It's time to reveal my current working FNAF timeline. But just before People I wanted me to do like all of them in things. one First, thing. this timeline is massive. Seriously, it is huge. This thing towers over any video project we have ever done on the True channel. True age revealed But when you look of at the Ash. totality of this franchise, the story of FNAF really boils down to the story of one man, William Afton. His successes, his failures, his rise to becoming co-owner of one of the most successful restaurant franchises in the world. And Was it really that successful? The it had like what, one location? Only to then be reborn in a new digital form later. Yeah. That's why I decided to split this timeline into three main chunks. The foundation of Freddy's, how the business started and how it came into being, the Afton era, a Chuck e. Cheese. decades long murder spree, and post purple guy. Basically modern FNAF. Everything that happens after the pizzeria simulator fire. And because there are oh, lots okay. of new big revelations in this thing that seemingly come out of nowhere, as well as just points I want to talk about further, I decided to dedicate one episode to each chunk. I originally okay, wanted so that to was. be one seamless continuous but it'd be very long. just felt incomplete without some sort of explanation at the end of each one. An Once hour animation. Done, I promise I'm going to merge all the narrative bits into one massive video so you 
you can just skip my explanation. Oh, did he? But for now, oh. this just felt like the best, I didn't know most he did satisfying, that. most complete. I read every comment. Do I don't think this. anybody said, said anything about that. Still about the story. I don't know. Life's crazy right now. The franchise. So in New order Green to make Train? sure that you oh, guys know that I'm not just pulling answers out of thin air, not only am I discussing some of the more controversial bits at the end of each chunk, we're also putting in a handy little graphic in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, which will show thumbnails, video titles, books, and any other citations well, that's that from. we need. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. So if you wish to understand that specific statement in more detail, you it know would be exactly right there. where we've taken it from. That way you can look into those details for yourself. So that's, sit back, that's grab some a lot popcorn, of time. or I, your pitchforks if you're the type to get upset when I say something controversial, I got water. make sure that you subscribe. I got pain. Since this is going to be a video that you're going to want to come back to a few times in order to fully dissect. Without any more waiting, I present to you the story of a loving, obsessive father who slowly descended into madness. Slowly? Along the way, discovered the secret to eternal life. Foundations of Freddy's. Our story begins not in the 1980s or even in the 1970s, but that the all the way seven? back in the 1930s. The 30s. It was the throes of the Great Depression, and people were in desperate need of cheap entertainment, oh, yeah, it was. especially in Utah, one of the states hit hardest, fourth highest really? employment in the nation, and oh, full of transit. Midwest people looking got for work destroyed. in Salt Lake, finding none, and ultimately moving on to find their fortunes out in California. People were ah. tired and they were hungry, but as they traveled, there was one thing that could lift their spirits: when was a, dust a simple ball? roadside attraction called Fred Bear's Singing Show. The ads were plastered all over town, featuring an animated bear drawn in the popular pie-eyed cartoon style for characters at the time. He resembled cartoons like Mickey Mouse, Felix the Cat, Betty Boop. It immediately said Felix that the this, cat. Fred Bears, was a place where you could bring the family. Betty Boop and the price from honestly critic. couldn't be beat. For 50 cents, you could get food and entertainment as you watched the local trained real-life dancing Dude, bear perform on stage. that was like a house Normally, back then. Normally, got to see dancing bears at large traveling circuses like Barnum and Bailey, where the tickets would go for about a dollar. That's a dollar without $18 Ooh, this in today's was a money. Show, like the type from the Vaughn brothers or the Robbins brothers, where tickets would sell Are they for just brothers? a mere 50 cents. Watching that bear do tricks on stage brought a glimmer of joy at a time when so much was wrong with the world. The simple show would go on for years. Which is probably based on something that actually did happen. Passing through looking for a quick meal, but it left a permanent impression on one little boy, capturing his imagination in a way that nothing else had. One little boy named Billy. That was his nickname at least, but his oh, parents liked to call William. him William. Yeah. William Afton. The bear could dance. It could sing. For decades, William dreamed of recreating that moment of bringing a musical bear to life. All because a oh, child William fell in love smart, with a bear. Without a doubt. And he had a keen mind for business, but he wasn't the most creative. How do you make a singing, dancing bear come to life? The best he could do was using rudimentary costumes. William was inspired by the work of Walt Disney. Oh. Who throughout the 50s and 60s was pioneering the use of mascot suits throughout his theme park. The oh, big innovation, oh suits with five Fingers. I haven't really this seen many of those when I was in Disney earlier this year. Natural arms I went to Disney back in with February. Guests, as opposed to older trip. models where the arms would just hang limply by their sides. Finally, with a simple mascot suit, he would be able to realize his childhood dream. He would be able to bring Fred to become bear the bear to life. To appeal to the kids, and for copyright reasons, he changed Fred Bear from a realistic brown animal to a cartoonish yellow bear with a purple hat and bow tie. But feeling like what one was character he wasn't enough, be copyrighting? he another friend. A yellow rabbit with a purple vest and matching tie named Bonnie the Bunny. While Fred Bear was certainly his first love, Bonnie was extra special because that was his. It was an original character that he had created from scratch. I thought he wasn't very creative. Scratch. William's hand-sewn costumes were rough with seams and stitches visibly showing, but it was the best that he could do. And you know That's what? Fair. It was just enough. Why did he just get the same deal that made the other one? on stage to small but enthusiastic crowds. Finally, he was able to deliver fantasy and fun to all the kids, delighting and inspiring them in the exact way that he, he yeah, had been delighted yeah. and inspired so many years ago. And things could have ended there. That could have been the end to his story. It could have been except perfect, bad things happened. For one thing, other people saw the success of his idea and they wanted in. Enter Chica's Party World, a rival restaurant starring performing animal characters. His idea, except Stolen. they did it better. William they may have been better. the first, but obviously he wasn't the best. It hurt the prideful William Afton to admit it, but this restaurant was able to do the thing that he always wanted to do: make the animals actually come to life. All of the performers. True. This restaurant were robots, simple metal skeletons that were powered by battery packs. But all of them, oh, uh, yeah, the batteries being connected on their own, no human required. It was like magic magic that came from the mind of what a year was this supposed to be? Named Henry Emily, still a terrible Henry, name, in some small way, had been able to harness the power of life itself. Afton admired him, he was jealous to be sure, but he also looked upon this man with awe. Off to one side of Chica's party world oh, was God. a small cabaret stage featuring an elephant magician, on the other, a hippo known to ramble on and on. That one was 
more of a joke for the parents. But it was the main oh, was was he? for the kids. A rocking band of characters featuring a yellow chicken. Oh god, that looks terrifying. Named Chica, backed by a band of other country themed characters, including a pig with a banjo, an upbeat frog from the local swimming hole, and a brown bear with a heavy southern accent. And Wait, a tie in the hat. But bears were his animals. <laughs> Why not a cow or a horse? Something or a to duck. fit the country theme a bit better. Why did it have to be a bear? And adding insult to injury, they had the nerve to call this thing Ned Bear, a direct copy the of Fred his bear. own Fred Bear. Whoops, that's gonna leave a mark. No, it yeah. was not okay. After that was the not okay. After the turned to hardened bitterness, a bitterness that would only grow over the next couple of so years he just as steals families continued Henry. to choose Chica's party world over Fred Bear's. William just couldn't compete with the appeal of the robots. Eventually, his restaurant would go bankrupt, only to get bailed out by, of course, Henry Emily. Another insult, another humiliation that William uh -huh. would soon forget. He got bailed out. Why did he get bailed out? Like, why did he, he could have just come in? It was a period of massive success and expansion. With the two franchises now merged into one, it was the best of both worlds. Afton's ideas with Henry's robotic expertise. The two men decided to launch under a new name, Fred Bear's Family Diner. Yeah. A pizza chain and that then would the murder happened. A mix of humans in performing suits as well as on stage animatronics. They decided to stick with Fred Bear as the headliner, considering the Yellow Bear was easily identifiable as a brand because he True. was the original. The OG. Mascot. Afton appreciated that. This new restaurant would also see a mix of well, characters it just as makes sense franchises for, merged into you know, one. Recognition with Pig Patch and Happy Frog brand. performing right alongside Fred Bear and Bonnie. And as part of this one big Fred Bear family, they even got themselves official merch that were released, ranging from masks to magnets. The mm -hmm. crappy Mr. Hippo fridge magnet? Oh. That said, not Wait, all you the apologize because you get the, the hippo. reception to some characters was just mediocre. So they faded away into the dumpster, storage units, and retro budget tech stores of lost yeah. nostalgia, budget waiting for their tech. chance to step back into the limelight if and when a headliner went out of commission. Others, oh. though, would fare much better, like a new pirate fox, as oh, well no. as a blue guitar playing variant of the yellow Bonnie Bunny. Ultimately, the franchise would get so big it would spawn its own cartoon show, Fred Bear and Fred. And that just follows around a booming. crying child. In the end, Fred Bear and Bonnie's popularity would be so strong that they would be able to support the Fred Bear's Family Diner franchise all on their own, while also spinning off a new sister location dedicated to their friends. In 1983, Freddy Faz Fazbear's Pizza launched. Faz a dedicated I don't know what that is. To all this new supporting cast of characters. Chica the Chicken, Bonnie the Blue Bunny, Foxy the Pirate, and of course the headliner, a brown Freddy Fazbear. Business was good, and Afton was happy, mostly. It did bother him that the one original character that he created, the one that yeah. he himself played, Golden Bonnie, got passed over for inclusion in that cartoon show. The only character in the roster of regulars to get ignored for the show, but other oh, than that, the only one? going smoothly. Oh. He had himself a wife, two sons, a daughter. He had a thriving business. And best of all, Shmoney. he was able to learn the craft of robotics from the man that he both loved and hated, Henry. Together, they were constantly pushing the limits of what these characters could do. Because it was quick and easy, new characters introduced into the roster would be given Honestly, this is more storytelling five fingers than, than like theories, and I wear. like Eventually, that. Eventually, Henry would design one of his signature animatronics for that character, utilizing a divided mouth with either a hinged or sliding jaw design. This was the first generation of animatronics. But why stop there? Afton had big ideas. What Profit. if animatronics weren't just locked to the stage, but could freely roam the restaurant and interact with the kids? What if his mascot suits could become animatronics? What if you could use more than just rigid metallic skeletons? Why not experiment with tubes and oh, wires no. oh, that would God. give the animatronics fluidity and flexibility while still providing And make them absolutely the terrifying. for this technology were endless. Afton fell in love with robotics. He had started with a dream of bringing one simple singing bear to life but with robots he had stumbled across the tools that gave him the There's ability my to corn. control life itself and thanks to henry he was practically speed running his way to an engineering degree and while william really? admitted out loud one other thing that they actually get a degree was the desire to beat his former rival to prove himself but you weren't together and more capable to surpass the man who everyone else considered to be a visionary genius but pride cometh before the fall and tragedy was about to strike okay so that brings us to the end of part one of the story oh, that's, that said uh... at the end of each of these 
down because I want to break down some of the logical leaps that I made since Wait, the there... more narrative format doesn't give me There's much still eight minutes left in this video. A lot of the big decisions. And admittedly, there are some large leaps in here. Let's just start off with Fred Bear's singing show, shall we? We know, based on the retro poster that was hidden in Security Breach, that at least at one point, Fred Bear was an actual bear. And like I called out in that narrative segment, mm. dancing bear shows were a real form of entertainment. I guess, the yeah. The only problem is that, timing-wise, none of our main characters would be the people in charge of that business in the 30s and a series yeah. of pizza restaurants in the 80s without him just being extremely old. Best case scenario, if Afton's running the singing show when he's 18, that still puts him at nearly 70 when the first pizzeria opens so and that has to be a kid. begins. Yeah. So it just doesn't make a lot of logical sense because he doesn't become immortal until his first death. He doesn't bridge. come That's immortal. That's why I suspect that Fred Bear's singing show was either a family business that so he explained, carried on to a new generation he tells or story, something that tells he saw it. as a kid and, and then goes back and explains it. He grew up. The Fred Bear singing show thing also Where he got the, idea the groundwork from. for some of the core elements of the story. That Freddy's was a place of fantasy and fun, and that Afton, despite eventually falling to become the heartless serial killer and mad scientist that we know him as, began as someone with good intentions God, and a he's love like of entertaining from, kids. He's like that he faction from uh, Warhammer. Life from the very beginning. The mechanist a theme people. that recurs a lot for him throughout the rest of the franchise. Next up, let's talk about those mascot costumes. One thing that they I cannot, keep back too. to is the design of Glitch Trap. It's a handcrafted suit. You can see the seams and everything. It even has five fingers for the performer's hands. It is very much not a spring trap suit. This is something much more rudimentary. It came at a time before animatronics were a part of the story. That's why I suspect that it was actually the first, predating literally everything. It's also a hmm. suit that is very personal to Afton. He put his digital consciousness in that form. It's his personal avatar. It's the way that he sees himself. There's also a whole separate discussion to be had here about the habits and rituals of serial killers. So the fact that he's choosing to lure kids ah. and kill them in this particular suit actually Liz, says wow. a lot the thing his signature thing yeah to it. so well fred Which, bear seems to have started as witnesses else's creation golden Must not be worried. was uniquely william cuz like someone be like oh it was a and that's rabbit with a this whole franchise vest. only one set of characters have themselves five fingers the nightmares even golden freddy fred bear was a five fingered wearable suit at one point in the story as we see in this shot from the graphic novel. wow we're counting Before, fingers he like everyone else was turned into an animatronic this seems to imply that all of the main characters had similar wearable mascot outfits at least at one point in time and that whoever is having the FNAF 4 nightmares if they even are nightmares something uh, that we'll touch on in part two saw okay. those mascot suits specifically lastly we have to talk about the elephant in the room the that literal uh, elephant literal Orville elephant. elephant as well as the rest of the mediocre melodies for a while now I've suspected that the mediocre melodies played a much more important role in the story than just being a bunch more animatronics to fill out the roster especially Ned Bear which is just like so why is he just supposed to be knock off Bear. Yeah. and yet there are two key details Details that we're gonna have to justify with any mediocre what if he's mentioned. maybe he sold technology maybe it's an old suit with external battery packs implying that they come very early in the timeline and two we know that at minimum mr. hippo does eventually become an official member of the extended Freddy verse but if these things are supposed to be cheap generic ripoffs why would you be trying to rip off yourself you would yeah you would be stealing someone else's ideas so if Afton created Fred bear there would have to be some rival franchise the only other person would be Henry would be ripping him off Henry. We've talked extensively yeah. about how the mediocre melodies are it's clearly terrible name. Henry's design aesthetic. So it just has to yeah, be Yeah, that, that does make think sense. I don't Henry's doing this maliciously. He doesn't strike me as the type. He was likely building the robots at the orders of someone else that was running a rival that's restaurant be franchise. But that's enough motivation to start Afton down a path of jealous rivalry, but also begrudging admiration. As the Freddy Files Ultimate Edition says, it's important to revisit the beginning of Henry and William's relationship. So here you go. I think this is where it begins. The ultimate also, guy. this is future Matt Pat here coming back to add this one in. Seems yeah. like the recently released character encyclopedia has backed up all of this speculation. Oh, really? This timeline written for about a month now, but I've also been holding off a bit to and see what wrenches compl this character encyclopedia might throw into it. And on this particular and it was point, completely say, right. it seems like we might actually have nailed it. They actively call out the suspicious similarities to the main Fredbear crew. Quote from one of the pages. Ned Bear looks like an imitation altered just enough to avoid copyright. copyright. I don't know about... I don't know about you, but that seems to imply that we were right on the money. Yeah, you know, that's actually kind of crazy. At one point, the theory being 100% right. That's I guess really the all the years. Get Mr. Hippo from the rival franchise as part of the Fazbear crew. This also mirrors a lot of oh what God. happened in the real life history with, of Chuck E. Cheese yeah. with two rival restaurants, each yep. with their own casts of characters merging to become one unified brand. Again, we've gone into that in that detail thing in other is videos. Terrifying Just wanted to looking. remind you all of that here. But why would I call out oh, the it? rival Showbiz restaurant pizza? As being named Chica's Party World? Few things, actually. First, we know for a fact that a location named Hi. Chica's Party World exists. It is mentioned in the source Just code don't 
using the puppet. That's fine. So it is out there somewhere and doesn't fit cleanly anywhere. Second, in the story of the puppet carver, Chica is very explicitly looped in with the book versions of Pig Patch and Ned Bear, implying Which means that, that she was one of them. as a mediocre melody. Thirdly, her design just fits better with a theme of down home country animals with southern accents playing the banjo and eating with bibs. And with her being the headliner That's of the show with her name on the restaurant, it would make sense then that, that with the she restaurant's got moved merge, branding. she was the one that was added to the main cast of characters while all the other mediocres faded away. It's also why when Freddy's closes after one killing spree, she's the one to branch back off into her old franchise and is therefore missing in sister location. A detail that's bothered me for years at this point. It might also explain why William decided to stuff his first dead kid into Chica. That one was Henry's why? creation. Why? Is it trying to, oh, is all trying to frame him maybe? Yeah. Is it connecting maybe? a lot of dots it's that possible. are very spread out across the franchise that I've been holding on in the back Probably also years? yes. Absolutely. But I think it makes sense. It also serves as a clean answer to a lot of the random threads that Scott's been leaving dangling for years. So with all of that in mind, my friends, we can close the book on the foundation of Freddy's. And don't worry, next week I'll be back to give you arguably one of the most confusing the, Next week, parts okay. That's when my video will be out. Patience to get a day early. Era. I promise it will actually be next week. I'm this guessing people, no this is the first around. video people want me to watch. To it's currently 10.35 at night, night and I have two more videos you know to record after this. I promise that we'll actually get to talking about the games. I would have liked to have talked about this episode, but there just isn't that much in the games that helps us depict anything pre-Family Diner. Although, let's be honest, this franchise has never been just about the games anyway. Even back in the early days of FNAF, we were decoding images and source code that Scott fed us through the website. The modern day books and the clues that we get from those what things, is that now they're just cover? modern extensions of that. Shm All of it is crucial some to necophobia? understanding this franchise and its lore. Unless, of course, Steel Wool finally gets around to making that Fred Bear's Family Diner game they want to make so badly. I've always would love to do is get kind of back to... Okay, what is that poster behind him? Getting back to kind of like the origin of like Fazbear. There's Batman, that would be so difficult to do. That would like uh, uh, Freddy Fazbear. The lore the would go crazy. We'll for that like one little game. thing would change this everything. Start to the timeline helps to fill in some of those gaps. I'm excited to share part two with you next week. If you haven't subscribed and rang the bell, make sure you do it now so you're notified when that, that part drops. That has 8.9 million views. Down Holy in the comments mold. below. And as always, I remind you, it's all this just video made a lot of money. In seven theory. months. Go easy on me. Tried my best. So people are still watching these videos. Like if the FNAF game theory videos are still super popular. So I'm guessing the next one would be the rise of Afton and then, then it would be burn them all, which is the end. And those videos are a lot longer. Yeah, this video would have been well over an hour. Honestly, right now with long form content being the best on YouTube, that would probably be a really, really successful video, but they broke it up and the next video is probably also going to have probably 8 million views, if not more, but it, a great video it's kind of crazy that pretty much everything in this video is right that it seems to be like or basically nothing about this is wrong as of when it came out maybe ruin changed that maybe the movie might change i don't think the movie will change it because the movie is set like it's not set, it's not connected but it exists in the same like universe kind of deal um it just kind of like shares the characters or the setting and stuff like that maybe it's an alternate timeline i'm not really sure i look forward to the next one i hope to see you there patrons get a day early hope to subscribe like i said get a hundred thousand before the end of the year which is gonna be almost impossible change my mind but if we get a hundred thousand for the year i'll get a duck tattoo and uh it'd be a little rubber ducky jackie made that painted that also signed Nezuka poster julian sent the field box and i love sign stuff so sign trevor lawrence jersey <laughs> oh, but i hope you have a wonderful rest of the day thank you so much for watching but next stream take care and keep the music we were playing